Well, I'm delighted to be joined now by keynote speaker and uh, past ASCB president, uh, Elaine Fuchs. Elaine, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. My pleasure. Now, your uh, keynote went extremely well uh, yesterday. Tell us a little bit about that. What were some of the main points you were trying to get across? Well, I think one of the main points really deals with the history of stem cell biology as we know it today and the realization that it took us about a hundred years from the point at which stem cells were coined as a phrase to the point at which someone actually demonstrated the existence of stem cells. And then that was in 1961 and then it took another 15 years before stem cells were cultured and then from that point on, it took a few years before more different types of stem cells were cultured and then with uh, the ability to reprogram a skin cell into a embryonic-like cell and then differentiate it into all of the various different tissues of our body, all of a sudden there's been, in the last 10 years, just an explosion of stem cell research. Now, some of that, talking about that explosion, I, I guess there's some good news and bad news come out of that. So some of the surprises and some things that have gone better and some things may be disappointed. Well, I think certainly the good news that has gone out of that really starts back in the late 1970s when uh, one of my former mentor, who was then at MIT, Howard Green developed the method for culturing the first stem cells in the laboratory under conditions where they could be maintained in, and propagated in a petri dish without losing their stemness. And he developed that method for the treatment of burn patients. Uh, ten years later, another former postdoctoral fellow in his laboratory adapted that method for the culturing of uh, corneal epithelial cells from the good eye of a patient who's blinded in one eye. Uh, and there was, a couple years ago, a 10-year publication of 100 patients whose corneal uh, blindness was cured uh, by the uh, use of corneal stem cell therapy. So I think it's often something that we think about uh, regenerative medicine and stem cell therapy as something of the future, but these are 30, 20, year long-standing successes of that use. And I think now the prospects of being able to culture not only corneal epithelial stem cells and epidermal stem cells, but also virtually uh, any of the cells of our body really opens the door for, I think, new and improved methods of treating various different disorders that, that we previously really had no avenue for uh, for studying in a laboratory or for treating. So let's uh, stick with exciting times if we could. Yes. Uh, talk about the ASCB. I mean you were a past uh, president of, of the ASCB. Talk me through the changes you've seen with that organization. Well I think there's two twofold. One are the changes and one are the consistencies and I think uh, this is the society that is viewed by other scientists as being the society with a conscience. And that's such a wonderful aspect of what the society does for many, many years now. Uh, they've been involved in public policy, in reach out to the community to really educate the public about science, about the importance of basic science and cell biology in and the interface between that and medicine and physics and mechanics. And, um, and so those are long-standing and continued uh, uh, successes of things that the society has done. But they've built upon that tremendously. It was a wonderful foundation and they've expanded in the last uh, 10 years. And uh, there are several aspects. One is education. There's a much greater uh, interest in education at the level of high school students, college students, graduate students, and involvement of graduate students and postdocs than there ever was before. And I think that really is necessary. Uh, if we are going to move fields forward, move medical treatments forward, we have to have a basic understanding of biology. And in fact, uh, time and time again, history has shown that the great medical breakthroughs are founded on basic scientific discovery. And so, we need to get that message out to the kids, really in, engage them in the excitement of what science can do for them. 
Sticking with that theme for my final question uh, on engagement, you look around the conference, it, it, it's very obvious that uh, uh, women have a prominent role in uh, cell biology and clearly within the organisation uh, itself. Something to be celebrated, but challenges still remain, I imagine. Well, I think like any, uh, any field where, or any issue where gender, uh, ethnic backgrounds uh, come into play, that we can look as a nation and say there have been tremendous advances. Cell biology in particular, I think, has taken the lead in many different ways with early on the development of a women in science program. That paradigm has been matched really around the United States. All major uh, graduate institutions have women in science associated programs with them. So I think that's a very important thing and you can see that you have a few successful women and that propagates more successful women and so cell biology really has taken the lead there but it's all relative right. and uh, there's still so much work to go there's still a lot of hidden perhaps not even intended bias that is exerted toward women in science in general and I think the day I look forward to the day when uh, when we can fully take advantage of at least 50%, and I guess that, in, that uh, gives you my own bias, at least 50% of all of the really wonderful and exciting talent that exists out there. Okay. Well, thank you ever so much indeed for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you.